what's up, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, United States of America, planet Earth? Because everybody watches us. I always do that. I always say, hey, fuck it, we're going to do Pittsburgh. But forget that like people in Pakistan watch us. They're like, there's the dude that brings on the chick with the tits. And clearly we are live, so we can say whatever the fuck we want. Uh, we're back with another edition of Barge 2 Live. I'm your host, Jim. With me is some of the greatest hosts that anybody could ever ask for. Um, the, the, the beautiful, the talented, the lovely, the sexy, the just oozes charisma and just fabulous Aaron Romeo. <laughs> and the equally yet more sexy and beautiful. Wait, you ruined it. Just Mananini. Love you, Mananini. Fuck you, Aaron. <laughs> and with us tonight is the very special guest host. I'm so excited. I was happy when you hit me up. You were like, I'm coming back. I was like, it's sweet. We're going to give you a camera, but I was like, fuck it. We're going to bring you in on the main camera. Um, Layla Page, fresh off her tour of the United States of America. We'll get into that in a minute. How you doing? How have you been? Great. Did you always have that? I don't remember you had. Yeah. Is that a heart? It's one of those teardrop ones that keeps... Uh, it like, keeps turning the wrong way? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. There it is. Still looks like it. You guys can't see that, but uh, she's got the stain in her nose. It's really sexy. <laughs> um, but you're looking good. You're looking... Uh, you, you're coming right off the uh, tour of wrestling. And we'll get into that in a second uh, because we got some good stuff going on. We got Aaron Romeo uh, talking about whatever the fuck he's going to talk yeah. about today. And are you ready? Yeah. Uh, and, and also, we got a surprise for you. We have a caller that is going to call into the show. She thinks that you are, what do they call it, a skinwalker? Yeah, <laughs> she, <thinks laughs> she does Basically, not think yeah. you're human. I she mean, said, yeah, it's one way to she goes, I, she reached sure. out to Nini. She re meaning what tell tell us she reached out to you and tell us what she told. She feels that Aaron is a creature attempting to occupy a human body. <laughs> I can buy that. And not in a sexual she way either. Attempting. Yeah, it was it was attempting, not like <laughs> And I could see I that in court, too. I could, I could totally see that in court. Your Honor, I wasn't trying to molest her in any way. What oh, I was trying to do was no, occupy that's... the vessel that is her body. Oh, my God. <laughs> in a very body snatchers type of way. And then he blinked sideways and shit and everything. <laughs> All right. Before we get started, before we get into it, Aaron, what's in the news, you fucking piece of shit? <laughs> Well, I'm just kidding, honey. It's Thanksgiving, so Alzheimer's like blink the waters, British Columbia, and uh, some of it ended up in American waters as well. So, so we're starting with over this overseas, okay? So we're starting with world news, not local or anything like that. We're gonna go world. All right, so you have polluted waters. Go on, continue. Yeah, so that's basically what's been happening: more polluted water with no, flesh what? eating bacteria in it. Oh, we're not gonna eating. get into that. Yeah, <laughs> not quite flesh. So wait, where did the where did the pollution start? Uh, from a coal mine, British Columbia. This is a terrible segue into the story. It so, is. So, so, like most people will be like, and I'm not trying to shit on your job, but I am shitting on your job. Most people will be like, you know, in you know, southern something something, uh, a, a coal mine was was cited for polluting into the waters and blah 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 blah. And what turned out was, I, why am I doing your job? Do you? Yeah. But, All right, yeah. so water got polluted and it came over here, and now everything's fucked, right? Yeah. What, what's I thought we were doing news, not old, not old news. Uh, what else? What do you? What else you got? Well, uh, it was the primary elections recently. Recently, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's coming up in twenty twenty four. Yeah, every week we tell them, don't go political. Goes political. So, Why don't you talk about Catholics while you're at it? <laughs> I don't know where it's, it's going. Totally cross them out. What about sports? What's going on in the world of sports? This is your. This is the what gets you excited. Like, I mean, I so just rattled off like a random year. He like, does it. The Super Bowl oh, well, and, 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 oh, and we're gonna do that again. Awesome. And we're gonna. Well, she she remembers it. Oh my God! Look at the look at the <laughs> sincerity <laughs> on his face. He was like, I'm not kidding you. I gotta take these off for this. When he was like, he's like, yeah, you know, sports is going on. And Layla's like, oh, remember when he ran out? He was like, yes, I did do that. Thank you. We were like, Guess what? Super Bowl in 2008. And he just Who like, was it? 2008? Well, 2008, nine season, if you're counting. 
The Steelers beating the Cardinals 27 to 23. Welcome your new stalker. Was the Giants beating the undefeated Patriots 17 to 14? You're fucking fabulous, dude. Right. That's way to go. All right, Danielle's here. We're going to kick this off. I'm so excited. So move over a little bit more. You got there. You go. Um, move more. There you go. All right. So guys, we <laughs> if Danielle is here with her patented shot of the week, and Danielle, guess what? We have a new sponsor this week, don't we? Yay, Butterfly Who's Bartending. Our... Butterfly Bartending. Yes, so if you need a bartending for private party, special occasion, or wedding, I am your lady. Yes. I'm very excited about yes. it. We're going to put your logo all over the place. We're going to do some cool shit. What do we have for us tonight? We have a watermelon bomb. Water. Watermelon bomb. What's in this? Watermelon pucker, vanilla vodka, a little splash of sour, some Sprite. Fantastic. Very excited. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Very excited. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, fucking fabulous. Thank you so much. I am very excited. Guys, if you are in the Mont Washington area, you want to try one of Danielle's patented shots of the week, she's there. Thank you. Butterfly bartending, Danielle's shot of the week. She is here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays. Scarpazies. Make sure you stop in, tell her you want to try a shot of the week. She'll hook you up. Um, all right, so we gave you an opportunity. You talked about sports, and then you switched over. Now you're going to stalk Layla. <laughs> she remembered something in your life. Wish. And if you guys can. When, oh, there we go. And if you guys can, whenever this, this replays and you go back, I want you to see the moment that she says, yeah, we gave him a sports trivia thing, and he knew it right away. When he turned, his neck snaps. And he's like, Oh my god. So he's now in love. He can make fun of you so much. I, I love it. You know why? I love it because he, he takes it so well. And and like and, and I don't mind it because then whenever he calls me at three o'clock in the morning, he's like, Yeah, you know that comment? I'm I'm sitting in here with my belt around my neck and I'm debating on it. I'm like, nah, dude, it's cool. And I'm like, I didn't mean it and everything, and then I do it the next week. It's That's good. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. All right, what, what happened with the Steelers? You're dying to tell us, dude. Tell us what happened with the Steelers. Well, they lost this past week to the Browns. Hilarious. <laughs> and as you know, if you watch the show, you know I am not a Steelers fan, not a football fan. When the Steelers lose, it is fucking hilarious because the whole city shuts Browns, down. Browns. Still like my grandma. That the whole city, the entire city is like, fuck it, I'm not going to work today. This place sucks. Fire Tomlin. When right. Tomlin he fired the offensive coordinator, Matt Canada. They fired Matt Canada. They gone because because the players couldn't execute the plays that he wanted. The Bills Bills got rid of their offensive coordinator prior, and when that happened, they got rid of Kevin Dorsey. When that happened, they were saying, yeah. "Why haven't the Steelers done that yet?" They were surprised that like the Bills are actually. And you know what? It's not like the Steelers got blown out. It was 13-10. They, they lost yeah, in the last, like, two just, seconds of the game. How can you blame that on Matt Cannon? They're a bad team this year, too. They are. The they defense. were dominant. Yes, dude. I, unfortunately, had to watch the game because of my daytime job that I won't mention here, and I'm not allowed to. But uh, I was forced to watch it in front of 78 people that uh, are not the greatest people in the world. But, you know, that is what it is. <laughs> but, all right. So, that's, that's all you got in sports news and everything. Penguins suck this year. Uh, Crosby, I, I love him, but he needs to retire because he's like, in hockey years, he's about 76. <laughs> Do you agree with that? You're fucking terrible interviews. <laughs> All right. I mean, see what happens. I mean, they have the rest of the season, seven games to go. They're at the Bengals next week, so. No, we're talking about the Penguins, but all right. Penguins, yeah. like, the Penguins have seven games? <laughs> Really that deep into it? Is it really like winter like already? Seven oh, damn it. Okay. Not disgusting. It's fucking terrible. All right. So tonight's guest is Layla Page, guest host. So we don't really do guests, we do guest hosts. Um, for those of you that may not know, uh, she was on the last episode with the Club Erotica. It's for Club Erotica. Very excited. Um, did not get to see her movies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh tell the viewers that the six people watching right now, uh <laughs> A little bit of vibes. Yeah, twenty eight. I from Mercer, but I live in Pittsburgh now. Um, I do security full time. Uh, some of you that may have seen me on TV, I was doing security for all elite wrestling. 
No, it's AEW. For those that are like, what is that? Wrestling fans know what AEW is. Marks. You know, the marks, marks know what AEW is. But smart no, marks, the smarts. But uh, so you were doing that. You were traveling. You you went around. Hey, is uh, is Rodman still with AEW? I believe he signed, but I never saw him. I oh, uh, I gotta text him. That was my man. I, I love Worm. He's the best. But uh, he would he would text me all the time, call me at like three o'clock in the morning, dude. I'm in Tennessee, and I'm like, oh, what's up, dude? Sleeping. <laughs> but uh, so so you travel, and you're no longer with. Him. No. I know we're not going to discuss certain things. We'll keep it at that. But are you looking to stay in the wrestling? Oh, uh, absolutely. So I I like it. I like that you are in the wrestling business. I definitely have the look for it. You you got the, the strong cheekbones. You talk about cheekbones all the time. My uh, Nini has fantastic cheekbones. Um, but look, they just Never heard they they so pop. Both of your cheekbones right now on camera are popping. It's fabulous. I love it. Even Aaron Romeo has good cheekbones. Me myself, I'm fat, so I don't really have great cheekbones at all. <laughs> but uh, so I think you have a fantastic look. I am so excited. Are you looking to get into any of the indies here in Pittsburgh? I'm not opposed. You're you're not opposed. Uh, so what you got? IWC is uh, is um is Pro wrestling, what is it? Uh, PWX still out? No, are they in the kids' I, I have a little bit of history. Oh, you you and me both. Fucking, uh, I started at PWX, and uh, they are... <laughs> I don't want to shit on them all, but I'm going to. Uh, they, they're, they're kind of like a shitty, shitty organization. Then they, they dropped their license a few years ago. I don't know if they got it back, but then, then they became Fight Club or whatever they were. And it was like uh, choreographed fighting or whatever. Whatever, man. Just drop the money that you fucking have and, and get your wrestling license back. Or whatever. But uh, do you want to talk about the history or do you want to leave it alone? Let me try. It's up to you. You uh, you could talk about it. Unless you don't want to burn a bridge. Me, I'll, I carry a box of matches with me everywhere. <laughs> I rather, so I rather not burn a bridge, but like I don't have like much history with them. I just never heard like very many good things. No. So. I'll tell you who uh, who's really good. RWA. Um, I, West I love, I love them. My last match that I, ah, that's not technically true, um, because I came out of retirement, uh, big before my 40th birthday. Um, I wrestled for uh, Code Red Wrestling, uh, which we're not going to discuss because I know you know Code Red Wrestling. Um, but uh, RWA is a great one. Rise, which I think is right there. Rise, is, Rise is fantastic. Um, but the top echelon. I'm telling you right now, even even bigger than I know IWC brings in the names and stuff and everything, but the top organization that you should look into, um, KWS, what is it, KSWA, uh, Keystone State Wrestling Association Alliance, thank God, yeah, K, KSWA, they run out of like Warrensville. They're they are hands down the greatest indie circuit running in Pittsburgh right now. Um, they're fabulous. They do. They do. They're like WrestleMania is. Uh, I think uh, brawl under the bridge. They do that every year around like July. Um, and then uh, obviously, but the number one that we were talking about, uh, AIW at Cleveland, they're phenomenal. Um, they are like to me. If uh, for those of you watching that may know this, um, Ohio Valley Wrestling, OVW was the training ground for WWF back in the day, and AIW is like they're just they just put out. Star after star after star, they're phenomenal. Johnny Thorne that runs that, and uh, Chandler Biggins, who you know, rest his soul. I love you, uh, Biggins. You're the man. Um, they uh, they just put out put together a great organization. I don't want to talk about wrestling, I and I always end up doing it because I I'm out of the business and I don't do it anymore. And it, fires and it up. gets me all fired up. And I talk about it all night. <laughs> I talk about the shit product that WWE puts out now, and it's fucking trash. Whatever. So. Um, how long have you been in the business? Uh, so I was traveling with uh, AEW for about four months. Okay. So probably about four months total. But yeah, but you kind of been around it a little bit before that. Uh, yeah, I dabbled in it uh, previously. I was a valet for a little bit. Um, did a couple pay per views, but like still, I was a valet. So I want to say three, four years in it, like off and on. Yeah. So and that's not bad. And then you start to network and start to meet people. But I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, definitely. Um, they had a good thing going there. Um, keep it going. Uh, I made sure going. I definitely kept in touch with you know quite a few of the wrestlers. You you have to. I still have like I still have Xbox uh, phone number. I have a lot of workers' phone numbers uh, that that don't work for WWE anymore. Still in my phone, just because I'm like, hey, 
you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving, and stuff like that. And they're like, holy shit, Ben Hughes, just fucking text me. I'm sure, like, if Thorny's watching this, which I'm sure he's not, but uh, he'd be like, holy shit, Ben Hughes, just text me. And it's been, like, fucking five years. Or... So I text him here and there, but it's, like, usually, like, to check up on him, like, how his day is doing. Like, last time I texted him was Halloween, uh, Mark Henry. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Like, I texted him, like, happy Halloween. I'm like, hope your day's going good. He's like, I'm the scariest thing this Halloween. Tell you what, oh. Mark Henry is one of the nicest he's guys. He's one of the nicest guys ever. Like, ever. ever. Ever like just he's just a just a big teddy bear. Right? Like I remember one time, like he was like sitting on one of like the uh, production boxes, like and he had his feet were just kind of hanging. Yeah. And oh, I walk by and he pats like the the spot next to him. He's like, come sit down. And like yeah, we're he, a little just bullshitting the whole entire time. But he's definitely one you want in your back pocket mm-hmm. when you're like, hey, I'm thinking like. Hey, yeah, he's a he's a sweet guy. Yeah, he, he's a sweetheart. Nini, you getting into the wrestling business? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You could be like Miss Elizabeth without the whole. I see you as like a Karen Jarrett. I don't know any. I could see are, that. Oh, but, see. I mean, I have to Google them. You definitely have to do that, but I could see you as a Karen Jarrett. Yeah. Karen Angles slash Jarrett, whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, on, okay. I used to, I used to love I mean, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> like have years to, like, ago. Up my ibuprofen intake. Oh yeah. I'll I'll never step back into the ring. I when I the week before my fortieth birthday. Uh, my kid wanted to see me wrestle one last time. And um, she was like, she never got to see me wrestle. So I was like, ah. So Code Red was doing a show down in, uh, it was right by my house in South Park. Um, so we, uh, I went down and I, I was like, all right, you know what? I'll train for a few weeks. So I did a tag team match and it was like this big gauntlet thing. And I hadn't wrestled in like nine years or something like that. Uh, it, it was a long time. Uh, or not nine years. It might have been like six years, five, six years. And it was probably my best match I ever had. <laughs> it was the best shape I was ever in. I was like, holy shit, I was never in this this good a shape. And uh and it was it was the funniest match. It was hilarious. We did this tag team thing where we won the first one, but then we ended up losing the second one because mm-hmm. my partner thought that the match was over, so he left the ring. <laughs> so as soon as as soon as we won, the next tag team comes like down. Tag team yeah, it was like a gauntlet. So the, as soon as as soon as we won the match, we hit our finisher, and we won. And the crowd popped, and they're like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Holy shit!" This crowd fucking loves us. He's like, "Yeah, they love us." And he left, and he went to the concession stand. And I'm like, "Tony, what are you doing?" And he's like, "Dude, you gotta try this pizza. It's delicious." I'm like, "We're still on." And then the two guys came in and squashed me. And he's in there getting drinks and stuff. He comes back in the ring. He's like, "Dude, what happened?" I'm like. We lost. <laughs> He's like, try some of this pizza, though, man. I was like, this is really good pizza. <laughs> and we ended up getting out of the ring, but it was, uh, it was like the funnest match I ever had. So it was a good, it was a nice match. I didn't do the whole unlace the boots thing. Yeah. And then, and yet again, here we go. The whole show talks about fucking no. wrestling. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about whenever you're going to. You had a very provocative picture that we posted. That people were like, yeah, I want to see that. It's one that I posted earlier. It was the one I posted. One I posted earlier. Okay. Um, are you gonna get back into that? Yeah. Um. So I do miss modeling. It's just like uh, whenever the cold weather comes, I get very unmotivated. Yeah. Well, you know, as many times as you're available, you are more than welcome to come on this show just to sit in. Okay. So we we love having you know a guest host come on and just sit on and talk about whatever the fuck we want to talk about. So yeah, anything. I'm sick of hanging out with all the boys. I know. She stuff. comes in here and she's like. What's up, sausage party? <laughs> <laughs> but oh uh, no, yeah, I mean you're definitely you're yeah. always a delight to have. But uh, tell us some things. Is there some things you want to get off your chest or anything? I don't know. I guess like one problem like I've been having like dating sucks. Dating is it's fucking terrible. terrible. Oh look, he did it again. He's like, yes, it does. That's like something I like constantly like low key complain about. I'm like, bro, I'm like, yeah. you are so fucking terrible. It is. So let's try something. Let's try this again because we did it. We were gonna do something. We were gonna do something with Aaron Romeo. Uh, win a date with Aaron Romeo, okay. and we had three people sign up: two two chicks and a, and a dude. <laughs> so we were like, all right. So we were gonna do the thing where we had the curtain. We were gonna have Aaron over yeah. here asking questions, and had three of them over here, and they all bailed, and we couldn't get them. <laughs> so would you want to do that on this show? We would set up three guys or girls, whatever you want, whatever your choice is. Um, and do win a date with Layla Page. Sure, I would love to do sure. that. Let's let's can we set that up, yeah. guys? If you're watching this right now, <laughs> you'd like to win. Well, okay, let, let me ask, guys or girls or both? Both. Both. Okay, cool. If you would like to, because we're you know it's 2023, who gives a shit? But if you would like, I I know all right now, all of my my lesbian friends are like they're they're like oh <laughs> oh Porgo Porgo, give me honor. 
So if you guys want to win a date with Layla Page, we will set that up. When can we set that up? Let's do it in about, uh, well, it's the holidays. Do we want to do it like second week of December or something like that? You know, we don't want to do it next week or whatever. It takes a can't be the family, toy like, drive night. Oh, it can't be. Yeah, it, it definitely. So we we gotta we gotta make sure it's set up. And so then you're we'll, gonna do the run of boyfriends. So oh, to my dinner. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic. And even we, oh, maybe we get a friendsgiving going. And I'll take you know you could take him to a friendsgiving. See how mm-hmm. when we fall. That's what we were gonna do with Aaron. We were gonna do win a date with Aaron Romeo, and then we were gonna fall in with the camera, and he's gonna be like, "You like French fries? <laughs> <laughs> this McDonald's has the best French fries ever." <laughs> Like, yeah, I love fries. Oh, I love fries. Love fries. So, but we would have like the gourmet fries. We would go somewhere and be like, no, we want like gourmet fries. And he's all like, you know, and he pulls up in the drive through. Hey, you know, can you large size those? (laughs) (laughs) But, anyways, yeah, that'll be fun. If you want to do that, we'll go ahead and we'll, you know, we'll talk about it and we'll put it on, we'll post it on the the Facebook page. Oh, that'll, oh, we'll blow that up on a date with Layla Page and then they'll, That'll be fucking great. And then, uh, but you don't get to see who we pick. And we're only going to pick, pick winners. We're not going to pick, like, you know, paraplegics and shit like that. <laughs> so, but speaking of Aaron Romeo and trying to win a date, um, let's, let's, uh, let's get Brittany, uh, on the phone. Let's see if she, uh, she's ready. So we have, we have a, a viewer, a very dedicated viewer. I do another show whenever I'm bored. I'm sitting at home and I don't got shit to do. Uh, I call it's called Bar Jitsu Retro. Okay. I just play PlayStation 2 games. And I'm not very good at it. I'm fucking terrible. But what I've noticed is when I play PlayStation 2 games, you know, I do like hashtag retro gaming, hashtag funny, stuff like that. All these people in like India, and UK, and Australia and stuff, view it because of the hashtag. So like, you know, this this show gets a couple thousand views a week um, uh, whenever we do it live on Facebook. But those ones, the one that we hit, what was what? Mr. Mosquito? got 12,000 views in, in like one night and I went because I was playing this stupid fucking game where I was a mosquito and all I did was fly around and suck blood. But you have to watch his No, we, no we don't. Because we don't have to. It was fabulous. It wasn't ah, uh, that's it my word. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah, there's I had Karaoke Revolution the American Idol version and uh, I did it. So um I I played it and uh anyways, getting into it uh, like I said, we have a viewer. She's a loyal viewer, and uh, she had claimed, made a claim about our own bear, Aaron Romeo. Britt, are you with us? Hi, you are live on Bar Jitsu, and you're with uh, Layla Page, Amanda Nini, and Aaron Romeo. Hey. So we, so you had a question. I'm going to hold the phone up so that the camera can hear it. But um, you had made a statement about Aaron Romeo. Would you mind repeating that statement? <laughs> so you're claiming that he's a skinwalker. <laughs> All right, so so she's referencing the woman that said that there was somebody not real on the plane. And she believes that Aaron Romeo could be one of those things. <laughs> Is there something that he does? Say it again. It is possible. Um, what 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 are the things that Aaron does that makes you believe that he may not be of this world? I still maybe. I don't know. I think he kind of he has like four kings and a human suit. <laughs> <laughs> It is quite possible. Oh, um, sorry, that was a good one. The episode where he mixed all the stuff in the oatmeal, I was like, yeah, confirmed. See, that's <laughs> that's where I agree with you. When he does the oatmeal challenge, uh, that it's not human. You know, when you're putting, <laughs> when you're putting sardines and Oreos and hot sauce, mixing it together, and then you're eating it, and then he's like, oh, no, this is like breakfast. <laughs> he gets all excited because he wants the ranch in there, and, and he always comes with a whole bag of stuff and everything. It's pretty disgusting. Like a racket? <laughs> like you were. Like a trash band. 
<laughs> well, that's it's you out, Aaron. You know that that's that's uh that's very observant of you. I like that. Um, anything else? <laughs> to the show. It's just, he's a little bit stepping out. He's human form. <laughs> he's, he's a great addition to the show. We love him. I clown him all every week. I yell at him, but he knows it's all out of good fun. Uh, but, uh, just tell him to get there. <laughs> yeah. I do say that. I do say that. So, hey, you, uh, while we got you on here, um, so you're, you're a big fan of the Bar Jitsu Retro? What's the best episode? Katamari. Katamari, Damashi. That's an addictive game. I fucking love that game. Thank you for suggesting it. Oh, did you? Bad. Oh, it's it's a great game. I I wish I could have that that uh, the theme song as my ringtone. That's the best part of it. it bre- oh, I'll make it happen. I'll download it. I'm sure I can find it online. Well, hey, I want to thank you for calling. Thank you for watching, and you have a happy Thanksgiving. All right. Tell you where to send my T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll, first call. All right, we'll get you some barge to give. All right, Britt, happy Thanksgiving. All right, love you. Bye. That was awesome. That might have been our first live call. The best. She is the best. She comments on all the YouTube channels, I, I, all the videos that I do. She's always making, and then she made a comment. Ah, I should have, I should have called her out on. Britt, I should have called you out on it. She made a comment on the one where I was playing Destroy All Humans, and um, if you've ever played that game, it's a pain in the ass if you start off with the small stuff. So I was using cheat codes, and she's like, "You cheater!" <laughs> Whatever, I don't care. So Layla Page, I, I'm just, I'm super excited that you're here. You're as beautiful as ever. You were wearing glasses last time, weren't you? Yeah. What happened with that? Just the uh, glasses for contacts, because uh, AEW is probably best that I got rid of the glasses, because you uh, jump over barricades, you know, just in case you got into it with a fan or something like that, glasses were better. So in the four months you were there, did you have any altercations? No. None? No. So you, just, you were just ringside security? No, I've also been told I'm pretty intimidating, you, so... You are. Just, they're like, oh, I know not to fuck with her just by looking at her. Well, you're definitely, like I said, I, I, I think we have a new, see, this is how it should be. I mean, we can have, like, Dale come on and do his guest guest hosting thing when he's got the comedy shows coming up, but it should always be, like, lady, male, lady, and then I'm just a dude. I'm like <laughs> the big Lebowski. I'm just there. Yeah. I'm doing my shit. I'm only 28 minutes in. So well, I never got into any altercations. It was more like fans being like, yo, Miss Security, can you uh, detain me? I'm like, bro, like, no. <laughs> when I when I was traveling, like with New Jack and all that stuff, and, and uh, the ECW guys, uh, I would like they would recognize me. They'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, I know from that show and everything. But uh, do they ever ask you the stuff that they they would ask us? They like, you know, so what's gonna happen? Who's gonna win this match? And, yeah, and, you know, like, bro, I don't know. know. <laughs> I I remember the first time when I first broke into the business back in '96. Uh, um. And I was training, and then back in 98, it was Living Dangerous in 98, and we went to, me and my brother went to Asbury Park, and we watched it, and um, I was bullshitting with, uh, I want to say his name was Ronnie, he was the security guard, and a real big guy, everybody would know him, he had the mullet and the mustache, and uh, he was just, everybody knew Ronnie, and uh, we're up front, and before the show starts, I'm bullshitting with him, like, yeah, you know, I just started, I'm back in Pittsburgh, Uh, I just started, uh, I'm green, I'm, you know, just uh, getting into it and stuff. And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, and we had front row tickets. And I'll, I'll never forget. He's like, so, you know, have you done anything? I'm like, I've done, like, battle royals. You know, I, I've done, like, spots where, like, we run into security. I'm like, but I still haven't really, like, had that match and shit. And, uh, and he's like, you want to do me a favor? And I was like, yeah. He's like, I need you to take this seat over here. So me and my brother, he gave us these other seats. He moved us to the other side. So we're right on camera. And I'm like, oh my god! Like the whole app, the whole pay per view. There's me and my brother. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, go hey, oh, yeah. Like, so, but he wanted us there. He's like, uh, he's like, hey, just just heads up when Spike comes in. And uh, uh, they, there was a Spike Dudley constantly was like the human lawn dart. They would constantly throw him over the barrier. So he wanted me there to catch him when he got launched. Okay. So I'm like, all right. And I'll never forget. I had a box of uh, like it was a box of like certs mints. Oh. And uh, 
and Spike comes out and, and they're working and he's with he's with New Jack. And this was right around whenever I met New Jack. And they, you know, here I am and and, and Ronnie gives me the he's like, you know, giving me the nod. I'm like, oh, oh, here it comes, here it comes. And they launch him and I catch him. And he smashes the box and it's all smashed and everything. And uh I it was just it was something that like stuck with me. So I always kept it. It was just it was a funny thing. I was like, oh look, this is the box that Spike Dudley smashed. So I always kept it with me, and I always kept it in my bag, my traveling bag, which was actually this this red one over here. And the one years late, me and New Jack are, are traveling together, and we go out to this show out in Jersey, and it's a big like legend show, and they got like uh, all the ECW guys are on it, and Spike's on. It. So the morning of, we're at this autograph signing, and uh, it's me and Jack and Lex Luger and and and, and Spike and Matt. You know, and uh, and we're sitting next to him and, and fucking uh, like, oh, man, dude, you know, I've been waiting a while to, to, to bullshit with him. He's like, oh, yeah, why, you know, so I get it out of my bag and I'm like, you see this box of certs? And he's like, yeah. I think, like, dude, remember living dangerously? And he's like, you're the dude in the front row that caught me. <laughs> he's like, you fucking saved my ass. And I was like, yeah, dude. So we got along all day. But it's like. Nine o'clock in the morning, we're doing autograph signings, and he keeps getting these bottles of water. He just pulls these bottles of water. So Jack is like fucking dying of thirst, and he's like, he's like, he's like, Spike, Spike, give me a hit. He's like, ah, oh, Jack, you don't want. It. He's like, oh, no, I'm just fucking dying. Straight vodka. Nine o'clock in the morning, he's fucking drinking vodka. That's what it was like. It was like you know when I was traveling with that, I, I fucking. I, I never really got into that. So I was always like the sober driver. I'm like, dude, we'll jump into the car with Van because Van's a straight edge dude. He, you know, he's not going to do any pills or any of that stuff. So I got mocks a couple times while I was. Oh, yeah. So that's, see, that's not true. So you get your face on camera and everything. You get known. And you get people looking at you and they're like, look at your profile. And they're like, well, man, she's a fucking work. I got quite a few people on Twitter talking about me too. Like, I had like a bunch of tweets on Twitter about me. Well, like I said, AIW is definitely a place you've got to hit up. You got to talk to Thorny, John Thorne out there. Uh, he's a solid dude. Um, they even have, they have a top notch. I know, you, you know, you already have some training, but they have a top notch training academy. It's, it's like, you know, uh, it's the best. So that's definitely something you gotta look into. Sure. Um, so what else? What else is going on? What are our what are our plans? We got uh, we got a toy drive going on here, December twelfth. Uh, December twelfth here, right at Scarpazies. It's the uh, annual toy drive. Last year, uh, it was phenomenal. It was it was what is it? <laughs> Fabulous. Um, I remember dumping a hundred dollars worth of uh, toys. Remember the fifty dollars, and then I did it again. I just went to the dollar store and cleaned it all out for here. We threw all the toys in the side. But um, I highly suggest if you are in the South Hills area, especially Mount Washington, please stop up and uh, see Danielle or whoever it is uh, that's working the bar. If you got something you want to drop off for the kids, uh, they're doing their toy drive. So check it. It's, I think it's a good thing. It's very cool. Plus, they're selling cookies. Yeah. And that's sons of bitches. Every fucking time I come up here, she's like, hey, she's like, hey, James, we got cookies for you. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a. I'm with the in Mexico. They call me El Fatador. <laughs> Fucking cookies, um, but delicious cookies that they bake uh, constantly. Uh, it's it's nice. Just stop in and buy some cookies. You don't have to get drunk just because it's carpeys. You don't have to come up and get shit faced like Aaron does. <laughs> get drunk and then buy cookies. What are the what are your plans? Any plans for Thanksgiving? I have to work. My aunts. Your aunts. What are you? You're going to your mom's. You're going to your aunts. You're going to your aunts. Danielle, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? You're going to your brothers? Fantastic. Um, I ain't doing shit. I'll probably work 16 hours that day. Doing nothing. I'm not going to eat any turkey. I'll probably have a bowl of cereal. Because nobody loves me. So, <laughs> but at least, <laughs> Layla's like laughing. She's like, well, who's supposed to feel sad? Yeah. She's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, I'm one of my moms. Fuck you and your fucking cereal. You know, it's right here. She's like, what kind of cereal? Captain Crunch? No, Crunch Berries. Uh, cinnamon toast Crunch Berries. Oops. Cinnamon toast What is it? Cinnamon toast Crunch. You know what? It's so funny that you say it. I had this debate. There's a difference between Cinnamon Toast Crunch and then the generic one. Cinnamon Toast Crunch gets way too soggy, way too quick. I love, this is the best I, part no, of the no, I have to agree. Generic brands, like, like, like Fruity O's, not Fruit Loops. I eat Fruity O's. You know, uh, what are the Dino Bites? Dino instead of Fruity Bites. Pebbles? What's your, what's your go-to cereal when you're eating a bowl of cereal? 
Like See, but do you like Fruity Pebbles or do you like the generic uh, Dino Bites? I, I think the Dino Bites. See, you know what? Maybe the Dino Bites. <laughs> for the Here's the thing. Here's the thing about generic. She's bougie. I know she is bougie. Man, generics taste better. The flavor is more powerful, and they last longer in milk. I don't give a shit if the perver- preservatives I'm eating give me cancer. It's delicious. Uh, but the, the generics are definitely better. I agree. I but agree. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is one of my favorites because my favorite part, I cannot believe we're talking about this. My favorite part of the cereal is not so much the cereal. It's the so milk, milk after. So it really depends. So if you got Cookie Crisp, you got a really tasty one, you know, but you got Fruity Pebbles. It's like, oh, it's it's good. Uh, Captain Crunch is pretty delicious. But hands down. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is the best drinkable milk afterwards. But it's not. It's the generic. Cocoa Puffs. So Cocoa good. Puffs is all right. Really good. Frosted Flakes is good milk. Now, you know what? The, uh, you see, that's fun. Why, why are you going to be like that? <laughs> no, Frosted Flakes is delicious. Yeah, you have to put a lot of extra sugar in That's You know what? That's with me and Cheerios. Like, everybody's like, oh, let's eat some Cheerios. I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. And I just pour it out. And I'm like, and this is not milk. This is sugar. In my, in my it has to like go to the bottom. It has to. Then you get, it oh, that's the Where's best. You get it. And you're like, you're like, <laughs> nah, nah. you're like, oh, you're like, I got a half a spoonful of, uh, of Cheerios, and I got three quarters of the spoon of sugar, and it's the gray. It turns gray, so it's a gray mound. And you're like, I love you, sugar. So my friends and I have this joke. What do you call like the center of the center? Mm-hmm. We call it the clad. The cl- <laughs> Uh, did you not, Aaron? Did you not get that one? Well, it looks like the same <laughs> He's like, oh, no, he's worried about social media. You're worried that you're missing messages on social media. No. Right? You've been very quiet. Today. You got anything going on? Tell me. You're going to your aunts. Your, I'm sorry, your aunts. Yeah. Going to your aunts for Thanksgiving. Are you excited about it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you're going to see family. Layla's getting bored because that's how much yeah, no. this fucking conversation sucks. But I'm super excited about it. And you're going to your aunts, you're going to your moms. Uh, I am excited, guys. Um, I wanted to, we talked about this last week, and we're going to end because we're at uh, we're at 38 Scottish. minutes right now. Scotty's what? Cannolis. Cannolis. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> this is a question to know. I come from. I it just he, out of nowhere. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Like, I have no idea what's going on. I guess. Cannolis? What are you? Oh, are you oh you're eating it's cannolis. Food. We're talking about food at your okay. aunt's. Fabulous. Um, so we we kind of got away years ago when we started doing the show. Um, obviously, this stemmed from the book that I wrote. Cheap plug, American, you know, Bar Jitsu, the American Art of Bar Fighting. You can get it on Amazon or actually Barnes & Noble and all that stuff. But anyways, when we started doing the show, it was like... We would do interviews, and then we would do clips of techniques of the week, things that you would do in a bar. Um, And I had said I wanted to start interviewing more fighters, MMA fighters, wrestlers, things like that, bringing back the bar fighting thing to it. Um, So what we're going to do instead of this week, how we normally end it on a music video, we're going to bring back something from uh, quite a few years ago. I want to say, like, holy shit, almost 11 years ago, we did this fucking video. 11 years ago. Holy shit. I'm old as balls. Mm-hmm. That, that, thank you, Nini. But, uh, but um, this was a, uh, this was one of the first, like, full, I guess you can call it a short film. It's like six minutes long. Um, but this was uh, presented by Barja 2. This is a technique of the week broken down with a little comedy yeah. skin in it. And uh, it is called Carl the Confident Geek. But before we go to that, Layla, you were awesome. Can't wait to do Win a Date with Layla Page. We're going to set it up, uh, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to get you guys to sign up for it. We're going to pick three people to win a date. Male, woman, hermaphrodite, uh, mushroom, I don't give a shit. Whatever gender you choose, non-binary, any of that shit, we'll go for it. Um, but uh, I want to thank you for coming in. You, you're one of the best. One of my favorite guests. Can't wait to add you to the Barjitsu family as a regular on here. Aaron Romeo, you did a great job thank in sports. Love you. it. You're thank fabulous. You. The man and Amy, always a pleasure. One, I, one of the best parts of my, you know, night is knowing that you're going to be here hosting the show. Um, and and that's it. So guys, uh, like I said, we're going to end it with Carl the Confident Geek from all of us here at Bar Jitsu and Iron City Beer. Please drink responsibly. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next time.
I'm gonna roll my 20 sided dice and see if I can charm you. Yeah? You guys play Dungeons and Dragons at all? No. no. Not even a little bit. Oh, hey. My spine will be fine. Wow. Did that suck? Poor Carl. No, I'll bet he wishes that he would have just stayed at the bar and never approached those two ladies. Maybe even he would have just stayed home that night. Why should he suffer the same consequences as literally thousands of people every night? What, because he had the confidence to walk up to two lovely young women sitting alone in a bar and start talking? No. You know what? Uh, let's go back and take a look at exactly what we did with this. Right off the bat, he, he's wearing this stupid hat, and then he's got his shirt buttoned all the way to the top. Now, I'm not a fashion guru, but if I see a guy like this walking into the bar, there's there's only one thing that immediately comes to mind. Wow, door. <laughs> all right, he's doing okay. He walked up to the bar and he ordered a couple drinks. There's nothing really wrong with that. Okay, here's his next problem. He's only focused on the two ladies. He has no idea what's going on, if they're with anyone, if they're by themselves. He's focused on them and nothing else. Whoa! Okay, big mistake there. You should never let anybody put their hands on you. That's just, under any circumstances, so, uh, no, no, it's no good, no. And now look. Now he gets to stand there and look like a complete idiot because he did nothing to defend himself. Okay, so what Carl did was immediately, once his douchebag grabs him, he reaches up and he grabs the fatty part of his hand. He takes a slight step back, what he's gonna do is he's gonna destroy the balance, right? And then he's turning his upper body, that way he's gonna get some leverage off. Okay, so what he did here was instead of trying to outmuscle Skullcat Boy, he used his body against him. 
Also, he locked out his elbow with his free hand. All right? Good job. Proper footwork's the key here. He's doing a great job maintaining his own balance while he destroys this little person. Show you that a little confidence can go a long way. So how are you doing? Well, you're fat. I get a beer. Cause you're almost a bad.